I had to wave at my daughter and my granddaughter and uh, my grandson, and it's such a blessing to be with y'all and to be in his presence. I don't know what he means to you, but he's everything to me. And every day he just gets better. Am I too loud? Because I can get loud. My wife told me, don't act up. She told me to be civilized, which that's going to take something, but God can do anything. I appreciate these young people and the other people that have entered into worship and just lift your hands to Jesus. How many believe you ought to lift your hands to Jesus? I think it's a good thing. You know, we could surrender ourselves and just give ourselves to the Lord. And, you know, I'm just so grateful for all his many benefits he daily loads us with, that Jesus is so good. The Holy Spirit's about Jesus. Everything's about Jesus. It begins with Jesus. It ends with Jesus. And everything in between is Jesus. But the Holy Spirit will help you know Jesus and help you know the love of God. And I'm so grateful. Aren't you glad for the Holy Ghost? You know, my, my grandkids, uh, you know, since they're here, I got to brag. You know, you know how you are. It's, I was there the other day. I get the opportunity to pick them, take them to school every morning and uh, sometimes pick them up quite a bit. Anyway, just a joy to be able to see them every day, you know, be with them. And my granddaughter's 10, and the other day she had a bag of clothes out, and I, I didn't know. I said, what are you doing with those clothes? She said, well, there's a little... Girl in my school doesn't have many clothes. And I just want to give her some clothes. And you know, she didn't just give the clothes to the girl. She she took them out and she says, I don't want her to be embarrassed. So she just took them out little by little and put them in her backpack and would take them to school where it wouldn't be like some kind of big thing. Aren't you glad God could do stuff like that? Yeah. Huh. And let me talk about my grandson. He's six. He's up there. Uh, the other day I was coming out of Walmart, and my pastor was there. And, and uh, my little grandson, and he's all dressed. I don't know if he's got his suit on. You got your suit on today, Lucas? I can't see. Well, he's got it. He wears his suit, man. He looks cool. And uh, so my pastor was seeing him and said, oh, you're all dressed up. He said, he said well, I'm going to be a pastor and so my brother Jerry thought, well, maybe he just wants to work one day a week. I didn't know what it is, you know. <laughs> but he said, no. He said, why do you want to be a pastor? And he said, because I love God. Amen. That's good, ain't it? Amen. Hey, that's some fruit right there. And I, I need to say something about my daughter. I don't know what. But anyway, she's a good girl. I love my daughter. She's beautiful. And, uh, you know, she was... I told her when she was young, I said, just save yourself for the band. Just be what you can for God. I said, when they make fun of you because you're a virgin, and they say, you're, you mean you're a virgin? I said, you turn around and say, you mean you're not. <laughs> and you know, she was when she got married. She just kept herself for, and, uh, you know, if she ever went out with anybody, they had to go out with us first. And uh, that's just the way it worked out, and I'm just grateful for her and her life and I'm grateful to be here in the presence of some of my friends, and I'm going to call David down at the end of this for an altar call for David Hull. <laughs> Everybody know he needs to get saved, doesn't he? <laughs> I'm up here, so you can't do nothing about it. Uh, you know God's so good to us, isn't he? Amen. Let's just have a quick word of prayer. I know we prayed, but Father, I am so grateful to be here, and it's an honor. Just an honor to be with you, Jesus. How wonderful you are. How beautiful you are, Jesus. Lord, I know nothing I can say can change your heart. But you, Jesus, you make all the difference. I ask that you would move in every heart and every life. That your grace is more than enough. That every person would leave here with me saying, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. That we'd receive revelation, knowledge that can't come by flesh and blood. It only comes by your spirit. So I'm believing you, Holy Ghost, to do everything you want to do today. And we just present ourselves to you as living sacrifices and believe you to work out your divine plan. That kingdom come today in this place in every person's heart and life. And we can all be changed from glory to glory as we behold the Son in Jesus' name. Everything that's said and done, let it bring glory to Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. 
you know, I, I didn't know I've got a couple pages of notes, and I don't follow notes real good. I, 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 do, I do some rabbit trails, and, but I do believe that when I rabbit trail off, it's the Holy Ghost, you know. And, but we're uh, talking about the Holy Spirit and the, His work in our lives and our hearts, and He is such a comfort. He's such a, uh, something that's changed my life, and uh, I didn't know exactly where to begin except with a drink of water. How many know he's living water to us? Yes. You know, in 1981, I was younger, and um, there was a guy that came to our church. His name was Dave Roberson. I don't know if anybody ever heard of Dave Roberson, but he had a, a, a mighty testimony. His life was just so full of God. And uh, I've, just a little quickness background on, on him, he was... He came and uh, he worked at a lumber yard, and uh, he just felt a, just a, a drawing of God on his life. H have you ever felt the drawing of God, you know? And I'm going to take a rabbit trail real quick on grace. Sometimes we don't understand grace. Grace, when God begins to move in your heart and life, you know what happens? There becomes an uneasiness. There becomes just a little restlessness. And what happens a lot of times is we try to fill that up with entertainment. We fill it up with something. But what it is is you're not satisfied where you're at. And God's trying to move you on. He's just like the eagle stirring the nest up. He tries to take stuff out, makes it uncomfortable, and he wants you to draw near to him. But a lot of times what we do, and that's why he says, don't receive the grace of God in vain. Just get that grace and go with it. Amen? Just like your daily time with God. You know, I'm a big proponent of... You know, if you're going to grow in this thing as a child of God, we have the privilege of being with him every morning. The best time of my life is in the morning time when I get up. I, 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 I tell people I, I wait on God and I spend time with him in prayer. And that's, it should be. It's, he said, get your weekly bread. No, he said daily bread. So if we're ever going to grow in that place that he wants us to get to, you you gotta have a you gotta have a daily program. Get with him every day, amen. amen. And and I believe this. This is for everybody in this room. Because I said, Lord, He's blessed me so much with grace to be in His presence in the morning time. But you know what? He's He's given every man grace. Every He wants to He wants to fellowship with you. He wants to meet with you in the morning time. Real real early. He said, Well, brother Ron, I got. Let me ask you this. Do you have a better plan? than what God's got for your life? Spend time with God will change your life daily. The branch has to stay connected to the vine. That's when the sap really brings forth the fruit. If you don't do that, you won't grow like God's wanting you to grow. And what a privilege for us to meet with the... Is my ears look okay? I don't know. This thing feels kind of funky. I feel like my ears are like that. I don't mean to be, I'm not really self conscious but I don't, anyway, okay, but I'm good, all right. I feel kind of, this is crazy. All right, anyway, uh, my wife told me, behave yourself, wrong. To be with him in the morning time, what a privilege you could be with the creator of the universe. Sit down in the presence of God. Can you imagine sitting in the very, what if you were going to meet with a, some kind of all-star or some movie star or something? Oh, yeah, yeah everybody be flabbergasted, but you have better than that. You can meet with the creator of the universe every morning. I come in there and I sit in his presence and I, I get my coffee, my java. You know, those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. That word wait is kava. And that word, that's in the Hebrew, and that word means to bind together like a rope. Those that wait upon God will get your soul bound together with the very heartbeat and soul of the Creator, but it only happens when you spend time with the Master. So what I say is I always get down in the morning time, I, 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 I kava with java, my coffee. <laughs> And then I spend some time, I pray in the Spirit because the Holy Spirit was given to you to help you get into the fullness of God, the plan of God. See, your mind and my mind is not quite big enough to receive what the Father's plan for your life is. 
God's plan for your life is so much bigger than what you've ever dreamed. You haven't thought big enough thoughts to get close to the plan of God. He's a much more God. He's a greater than God. He's an exceeding abundant above God. I got a little song that I began to sing. My grandkids, y'all want to sing it with me? <laughs> they, they know the song because I had them sing it with me. It's, it's called Break Me Out of the Box of My Low Life Living. Break Me Out of the Box of My Low Life Thinking. See, because we just think natural so much. Just because you've never seen it done don't mean God can't do something. Just because you ain't never seen God move the way he wants to move don't mean God can't do that. Break me out of the box, my low life living. Break me out of the, you know I'm humbled singing this, of my low life thinking. Break me out of the box of my low life living. Break me out of the box of my low life thinking. Because in you I live and move and have my being. Because in you I live and move and have my being. Because in you I live and move and have my being. Because in you I live and move and have my being. So break me out of the box of my low life living. Break me out of the box of my low life thinking. Break me out of the box of my low life living. Break me out of the box of my low life thinking. Because in you I live, say it with me. In you I live and move. And ha sing it with me. And you I live and move and have my being. Amen? Amen? We live and move and have our being in him. Listen, God's got more for you than you've ever thought about. God is much, much, much bigger. And God's got something for the body of Christ and you in particular. I tell you, God wants to do something in and through your life that people just marvel at. Because it's Christ in you. That's the hope of glory. It's Christ. Say Christ in me. I love what your pastor said as he began to prophesy over this place and speak to the life of it that's in you and me. It's Christ in you and me. Amen? Anyway, in 81, I had a man that came. See, this thing don't want to stay on me. It's, there's technical difficulties. <laughs> Stick that on there, brother. Uh, am, am I good? Yeah. You know. <laughs> David, we're going to have you repent after church. Uh, in, that, in 1981, there was a, a guy that came to our church, Dave Roberson, and, and he was so full of the Spirit. And, and, this, and you know, at that time, I was younger, and you know, I prayed in tongues because I was Spirit-filled, but I just prayed in tongues occasionally. And I really didn't know you could just pray when you want to. I didn't realize that uh, it doesn't have to even be I'm feeling with it. You don't have to have an emotion. You don't have to start shaking. Matter of fact, the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. If you're worried about jumping down here and shaking and flowing the floor or something, ain't gonna, God ain't going to do that for you. He ain't doing that. But you can pray the, the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. It's like I tell people, you can't talk in Spanish and English at the same time. You can't talk in tongues in English at the same time. You go one or the other. You just kick. I don't have no problem. You don't kick. My granddaughter went on 10th birthday. I went over and said, you need to get spirit-filled. And I prayed for her, and she felt kind of intimidated. And I said, listen, I done found this out. I, sometimes, you know, the devil always makes us all feel intimidated. And I said, you don't got to do it here in front of Papa. I'll just go back in your bedroom and do it. You know, just let it flow out of you. He said, out of your belly will flow a river of living water. And this thing's so simple. I'm telling you what, we just make complicate. We complicate things. We all complicate stuff. Oh, well, I tell you, if you don't know how to do that, I don't, know how to, I don't even know those words. But I know him, and he loves you. And you know what he wants to do? He wants to, show the, he wants to shed abroad the love of God in your heart. This man, he just, he, he moved me. This man got, he got me all fired up. And I said, well, I, and here's what I did. I said, I want to, I'm going to pray in tongues. I made myself, I said, I hadn't really been praying in tongues a lot. And I said, I'm going to start praying our day. I'm going to, our day. I'm going to pray our day. Hallelujah. Tell you something, unless God gives you grace, it's easy. But anyway, I'd start doing it. 
I started getting in my shop, little, had a paint body shop. Went by about four weeks or so, praying until our, our day. Hallelujah. You know, something about praying in the Spirit. I, 1 Corinthians 14, 4. I don't know if she may have that scripture there. But, you know, when you pray in the Spirit, it does something to you. Do you have that up there? He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies. And that word actually means to build up just like a house, a house builder. It builds you up. Tired of being depressed? Tired of being down? Don't have the answers? He helps your weakness. The Holy Ghost is a helper. He's helping you with the plan of God. He's helping you catch the vision of God. He's helping you know the call of God. These things are mysteries, but when you pray in tongues, you can receive mysteries. Things that you don't know, he can show you. He'll, he'll, you can pray it through you, but he, it says, uh, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edif- builds himself, but he that prophesies edifies the church. So praying in the spirit in tongues is really a personal thing with you unless it's interpreted for the church's benefit. For me to get up here and just go, hey, la, 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 so, la, but, you know, you're not being helped by that. But it builds me up, and it builds you up, and you need to spend time doing that. Well, I, I just real quick finish that story. But, so about four weeks in, in that prayer, and I'll tell you, the devil hates you to pray in the Spirit. Why do you think there's so much adversity to praying in tongues? Why do you think if I was in a war and I, I knew you had a big gun, I'd be trying to get that big gun out of your hand. And so the enemy, so much division, things, try to keep people, oh, quiet tongues down. Even in Pentecostal realms. Oh, wait, I don't have to. Listen, it's important that we pray in the Spirit. Uh, and I ask the Holy Spirit today to encourage us all. Amen. Spend time, build yourself up. Matter of fact, that same scripture, it doesn't say actually build yourself up in the Spirit there. It just says build himself, build edify himself. Say himself. All parts of your being. And you can look this up. It's on, you can Google it. But old Roberts did a study. Some of y'all may have known about it. Uh, about years ago, uh, there was Carl Peterson, MD, did, uh, did brain waves, confu- hooked up his brains to people praying in the spirit. And as they, there was two chemicals secreted in the person's brain. There's no other reason why it was secreted except they were praying in the spirit and it caused their immune system to be 35 to 40 percent more effective by just praying in tongues god knows what he's doing i told my daughter been fighting some back issues i said pray in tongues pray in tongues just spend time it ain't gonna hurt you it builds you up pray in the spirit amen so anyway after about Four weeks of praying in the Spirit, I had a brother in Christ, uh, Brother Lowell Mobley. I don't know if anybody knows Brother Lowell. He's a blessed man of God, using the gifts mightily. And back before we had mobile phones, and, and uh, he stopped at a pay phone, and he called me. God gave him a vision of my shop on fire. He said, Brother Ron, you're using something new. Be careful. God showed me your shop was burning. Mm. And, I, you know, I... Uh, I'm sorry, but sometimes, you know, you got to be careful. You just kick into this reasoning, and it messes you up. you got to really be sensitive to hear the Spirit. So I, I didn't pay him. I, I said, well, he maybe ate some pizza or something. Anyway, I don't know. I just didn't. And I, I thought about my new chemicals and stuff, and I wasn't using anything new chemicals. But two weeks later, my shop burnt to the ground. And it was the new, <laughs> this is how dumb you can be or I can be. It was the new wood-burning heater I had in my shop. And uh, from that, it had, I had a, it was a low ceiling with uh, exposed, and I'd hammered, I don't know if this sounds tacky, but it's what, I'd uh, tacked cardboard up there to keep the heat from going up. And there was a piece of cardboard that was hanging down over that stove. And uh, for two weeks, God was trying to get me out of that. But you know, he took me through it, and I came out all right. Because my shop burnt down, but you know, uh, you know, next time Brother Lowell spoke over my knee, uh, about nine years ago, I had surgery scheduled for this knee. And uh, I mean, it would come out of the socket. Every time I went like this, that knee would just fall out. And, and I'd pop it back in and then start swelling up. I went through all this prednisone stuff. And 
had surgery scheduled, don't have insurance, going to cost me $4,600. This is, like I said, 10 years ago, probably 9000 now, but going to Arkadelphia. And the day before at church, Brother Lowell says, God's healing your knee. Well, then I had the same thing again to figure out. Is this God? Am I going, you know, and I just didn't, I didn't take it. I said, I receive it. And so the next day when I called down to the doctor's office in Arkadelphia, I said, yeah, this is Ron Wilkes. I, I don't need that, that surgery. And I tell you, the whole time I was talking on the phone, I can't tell you how loud the devil's voice was hollering in my ear. But here's what he was saying. You're stupid. You've waited two months. You're going to have to call back and reschedule. What are you doing? But from that day to this day, this knee's never come out. Perfectly healed. Perfectly healed. How many know we got a great God? And he wants you to be full of his spirit and his love. And that's one of the first things the Holy Spirit comes to do is to show us how much Jesus loves me. Say it with me. Jesus loves me. Yeah, but haven't you messed up? I know, but God don't look at me. He looks at his son. I'm, my life is hid with Christ. I'll tell you the good thing about it, this is a grace message. God's all about loving me through his son, Jesus. Aren't you glad for Jesus? I would imagine everybody in this room has messed up somehow or another, but aren't you glad Jesus didn't mess up? He's my sin offering and covering. I'm so thankful for what he's done in my life. But in, uh, in Romans chapter 8, let's look at that verse real quick. It says that, chapter, uh, chapter 8, verse 26, says, Likewise, likewise, can y'all see that? Uh, change the background. Can you change the background? I think that green's kind of, there we go. Y'all see it now, right? Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself, or like I say, himself, maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And you know that word, helpeth. Aren't you glad he helpeth us? That word actually means to take hold together against, with. Take hold together with. Say, take hold together with. The Holy Ghost will take hold together with. That means you've got to do something. He's going to take hold together with you. He don't do it. Oh, if he's going to do it, I just let No, he's not going to pray by it. You've got to pray. He's going to take hold together with you. Amen. Say, I've got to pray. You've got to pray. Why should I pray? Because God's trying to get stuff in you and me that needs to be there. Plus, let me tell you, look at my grandkids up there. If, if I was to pray... The, and I am in the Holy Spirit, you can pray the will of God over them. And it, let's say, for instance, if he was to show you, the Holy Ghost show you, they're going to have a, they could have a wreck tomorrow. Or they could have a wreck. You know, if I knew that, I wouldn't let them go out of the house. I'm keeping them in. How many know what I'm talking about? So some things is best you just pray the Holy Ghost to take care of that without you being troubled about it. Aren't you glad? I mean, he's covering them. He's covering your grandkids. You ain't worried about it. God's take, aren't you say, glad God can take care of things? Say, so he can take care of it. But you, he's going to help your weakness. You need to, he's going to help you. You don't know what the problem is, but he already knows. He already knows the plan of God. Let's go to the next verse. We go ahead and, and he that searches the hearts knows what is the, the plan. He knows the plan of the Spirit. Say, so he's got the plan. And he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Next verse. We all know this one. And we know that all things work together for good to those that love God that are called according to your purpose. Aren't you glad? But he's going to say he's going to help me. And that's what he says over in uh, first, uh, let me, uh, in uh, Timothy. Let's just go to this. Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. He's going to help you because this is what's on your life. Say, this is on me. The older you get, excuse me, the more mature you get, I, sh I take A-G-E word and O-L-D word. I don't talk those no more. <laughs> M-A-T-U-R-E. The more mature you are, hallelujah. Because, say, I'm going for 120. Some people are satisfied with 80 or not. I'm 120. Can I get a witness in the house? Y'all too young. I mean, I, I, 120. I'm going, I'm going for it. 
eyesight not dimmed, youth not, hey, I believe God can do, God can do abundantly above all you think or ask. I'm going to stay here till we all go up together. (laughs) Who has saved you and called you with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace which was given to you in Christ Jesus before the world began. God's got a calling on you. It's holy. It's an awesome call. But part of the thing is you've got to get to understand the call by spending some time with him and start praying in tongues that you can pray the exact plan and purpose of God that's hidden these mysteries into your very heart. You know, part of what I did in body works when this thing's still trying to act up. Anyway, in, in, in body works, you know I was, is it going crazy? Do I look silly? If I do it, as long as Jesus looks good, I'm all right. <laughs> Are y'all doing this on purpose to humble me? No. Okay. It's for what you did to me in the gym the other day. <laughs> <laughs> but God's got a plan for all of our lives. And the more mature I get, the more I know that my days are precious. When you're this age, it's a day. But when you get a little more mature, David said, let me number my days. Help me count them as precious. It's a precious thing to be alive. Man, I got all kinds of stuff I could complain about. Do I have any complainers in here? There's stuff I could complain. There's, I bet you, you can't work out like we do. It hurt, stuff hurts. I'm, I'm a, I hurt. There's not a day goes by. They say, when are you going to quit hurting? I say, when you quit working out, I guess. I don't know. I hurt all. I've got stuff all the time. But I, I learned not to complain. I'm thankful. You know, part, a guy told me where that pain says I'm alive. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, God's got something good for you and me, but we need to number our days and spend time with him and find out. Listen, I don't want to go to my grave and find out. God said, you know, I had so much more for you to do, but you just kind of lallygagged around, didn't spend no time with me all the time. I kept telling you, I got mysteries. I got deep things. I got big things. I got more than enough. I want to show you, but you got to get some time with me and pray in the Spirit to pray these mysteries down. That's what it says in uh, 1 uh, Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. Look at that. Put that up there. Look at what it says. For he that speaketh an unknown tongue, what? Not unto men, but unto God, for no man understands it. How be it in the spirit? Excuse me. You speak mysteries. What's the mysteries are things? You're not telling God stuff. He knows everything. The Holy Spirit is communicating to your spirit the very life, the very life force, the very presence, the reality of Christ in you, the hope of glory. God wants you to be so illuminated with his presence that when you walk in a building, the very light force of God shines out of this mortal body that people know this man has been in the presence of the living God. I don't want to be just an ordinary person, spend my time and go to my life end and not have a real encounter with the living Jesus doing everything I can do while I occupy this earth suit. God, help me know you better every day and get everything you put me on this planet to do. Y'all don't know how real this is in my heart. This is more real than you are to me. Jesus is real this morning. He's so real when I get up in the morning. When I get before him in the morning, I thank him that I can spend time with him. He is a friend that sticks close to that brother. He's the love of my heart. You don't know how good he is to me. I can't tell you how wonderful he is. But he wants to have an encounter in your life. You've just got to spend some time in his presence and pray the very mystery of God down into your heart. 
I was pastoring a church in 92, and I was, the Spirit stirred me so much. And I began to just pray in tongues every morning. I prayed every morning, one month, two months, on the third month. Prayed every morning. Everybody's different. It might not take you that long. But in the third month, here's my prayer. God, how can I help my city? How can I touch people? I didn't even know how to pray it right. That's what I, my heart's desire was. And I was just praying in tongues. In the third month, he said, <clears throat> build this gym. You say, well, can you build the gym without that? I don't think I could. Because when he told me to build the gym, you got to understand that I had some financial issues. <laughs> and I couldn't build a gym. You're talking about it's pretty big. It's lots of money. How are you going to do that? But when God tells you, he empowers you, and he gives faith to you to do what he called you to do. No telling what all is inside your hearts and lives. Things so much bigger than what you've ever seen. God's trying to get it out of you. Don't you know God wants to get this stuff come to fruition? God does not want you to go to the grave with these dreams of his in, in your heart. He wants you to Spend time with him and let the Holy Ghost give birth to these things in your inner being. Amen? So when all the banks said no, 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 crazy, not going to happen. It's like you telling me you're not a man. I am too because I knew I was and I knew it was going to happen. You know what? God just saw his plan through. It just came about. Everywhere I went, and I, no, land wouldn't sell. Went, you know, nothing would happen. Nothing would go my way. Every day. I remember two years. This thing about God's plan in your life, a lot of times he may give you the plan. Then it may take time. And if you're not really hooked up with God, you may fall by the wayside. Because you got, he, he's teaching, he's learning, he's grooming, he's there's a time for every purpose under heaven. God may speak something to you, and it may take a little time for it to mature. Everybody wants that microwave miracle. I got it. Ooh. Two years, I was sitting in my house on Sunday morning, two years after I'd got the plan of God, going to build. Nobody'd sell land. No, everybody, not that I had money to buy it, but I was just going forward. Land that was... land. That was for sale forever, sold. This nobody was. And this one man I talked to where Body Works is, he said, No, nah, I don't want to sell it. And so I was reading in Psalm 5, and I think it's verse 16, NIV talking about, I've placed you within pleasant places. I've kept your borders. It was just the Holy Spirit just spoke to me. I got your land covered, son. Don't worry about it. It's going to be all right. You know what I did at that time? I did what God wants you to do today and wants me to do. Rest in his plan. When we really struggle, you know what we struggle with? The, your biggest struggles in life is where you worry. Your biggest struggles, whatever, if it's finances or health or kids, that's the big three. Grandkids. Whatever you worry about, that would be your big struggle. You know what God wants? He wants you to cast all your care on me. He's got a plan. Say, he's got a plan. And when I read that, I just released that care. I said, why am I worried about this? God said he's going to do that. I can't do it. I ain't got the strength. I ain't got the money. I ain't got the nothing. God had to do it in this time, and I ain't worried about it. Excuse my ain'ts. But, so I just give it to him. Two months later, the guy that... Uh, that I already talked to about buying the land that was, that where I am. And he said, no, I don't want to sell the land. He had called me up. And he offers the land to me cheaper than what I was going to offer him the land for. Just give him more money. How many know God's got a good thing? And not only that, but God said, he said this right here. He said, uh, he, I, I told him this. I said, well, that's great. I'll do it. 
uh, uh, I only paid twelve thousand five hundred dollars. That's pretty cheap for three acres right there on the highway. Anyway, the, and I, I didn't have no money. I still had no money. I said, "Will you let me pay it out?" He said, "Yeah." I cut the timber off of it, got four thousand dollars, and that was my down payment. Just took it off the land, gave it to him. Hey, and I was on my way. Then I had a a, a man that a uh, did, that grew up with me. He knew how to do stuff. We, we started doing some dirt work and stuff. And old Rodney Allen, I don't know if you all know Rodney Allen, but he, he drives a truck, has a truck line. And uh, I had a friend that he demoed buildings for a living, had to tear down big structures. And he had a big structure in uh, Batesville, Arkansas, all this steel. He said, would you want the steel? How much is it going to cost me? Free. I said, that's a good price. <laughs> Only thing is, I got to get it from there to here. So I'm saying, that's going to cost a lot of money. I'm still occupying. I've still got zero money, zero capital, zero income, zero squat, nothing, nothing, nothing. But how many know when God puts something in your heart, God can take care of everything that concerns you? So here I am. And I got Rodney Allen. He's been a member. And I say, Rodney, you driving trucks? Hey, good buddy. And he said, I told him what the deal was. He said, no problem. We go by there every day. We deadhead by there every day. We'll stop, pick up the steel for you, bring it down to you for nothing. I, had, I, I could go on and on, but I'll tell you one more quick story. We, we want to start putting these uprights up. Steel, I don't know nothing about how to put a steel building up. I pray in tongues. I've been praying in tongues the whole time. I forgot. I'm praying in tongues all the time. That's all. I just pray in tongues. And God working out all the details. <laughs> Listen, y'all worried about stuff. You just got to pray in the spirit. God can work out. How I many know like God can work out the details? Amen. God can work it out. So I'm praying in the spirit. And, the, and the, I, I, this is coming up. We're going to John Tanner. He's got this crane deal thing. He's going $125 an hour to put this stuff up. I still don't have no money. I ain't got no money. I'm just... Every day, fly by the seat of my pants. God, you got to promote Jesus, do something. And so, anyway, the, uh, the night before, Thursday night, Friday night, Friday day, he's showing up with the big crane, $125 an hour, put these uprights up, and the big steel. And this guy shows up in my shop. Hadn't seen the guy in three years. Hey, what's going on, man? Hey, good to see you. Hadn't seen you forever. Where you been? Oh, I've been working in a seven-state area for seven days a week, always working. You know what he does for a living, don't you? Puts up steel buildings. He said, well, I'm off tomorrow. I'll bring my spud wrenches, everything. I'll be there to put the up, help you. How many know God's a right on time God? I, could, I couldn't, I couldn't, die, I couldn't draw that out. I couldn't draw that out no more perfect than it was. But God, let me tell you what God did. God birthed that in intercession prayer when I gave myself to praying in tongues. The very plan for which I was placed on this planet, part of it coming to being just because I spent time praying in the Spirit and God was able to birth that plan onto, into this earth. And you know what I do every day? As he says, I witness, I give, I give a track. Matter of fact, uh, I got saved by the track that I give out to my... If you come to Body Works, you're going to get tracked. By the way, I have a discount. All oh, y'all want to come down? Get anyway. We'll make it. It's a little track that I got saved by in college. Four spiritual law track. And I was in school, didn't know Jesus. 20 years old, in darkness. And somebody gave me that track. I read that track by myself, gave my heart to Jesus. You know, I believed in him. I just never had made him my Lord, never received him. Isn't God a good God? The places you and I both been, brother back there, I know how God's kept you safe through the years with the long hair. I used to have long hair. But you know, God's kept us through so many stuff, hadn't he? Hadn't God been good to you? But there's so much more he wants to give birth in this natural arena through your life. His plan is so much bigger, so much larger than what you've seen. And God wants to give birth to it. But you've got to spend some time praying in the Spirit. Say pray in the Spirit. Say pray in tongues. Same thing. Build yourself up. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Just Give yourself over to him. Don't know what to do in the situations. 
How many's ever been in a situation you had no way out, you didn't know what to do? Raise your hand if you've ever been in a place that you, raise your hand real, loud, real high and keep it up, just a minute. Everybody look around. I, most all of us. I remember one time back years ago when I was so desperate and I had no answer. And I was so tired and beat down. And I knew if I build myself up praying in tongues. I went back, back that time I was living in a trailer. I went out behind the hill. On, and I just said, I know God, you said I pray in tongues. It builds me up. One hour, two hour, three hour, four hour, five. It don't, I ain't saying it just takes wherever long it takes for, for God to get through to you. Some of us takes longer than others. But I know in the sixth hour, I had a breakthrough. And I saw Jesus big. Matter of fact, that shop that burnt to the ground I told you about, I had an encounter with God when it got put back together by the grace of God. The last night when I, I had this car in that shop that got burnt, I barely put, pulled it out. It had 400 miles on it, and I was building it. It was a total, but it had been hit in the rear end, and I had it all together except painting it when the shop burnt. And, uh, I deal through, fell through the back glass of the window and caught the interior on fire. And, uh, I just ran in that fire, and it cranked right up. I drove it out. Anything plastic on it had melted. Even the place where you put the door lock in, where it had the little rubber things around, the, melted down the side of the door. That's how hot it was. And I pulled it outside, and it took eight weeks for the shop to be rebuilt, and that was by a miracle. All these miracles, you know, we all got, I mean, some wonderful but I know when I, the night I pulled that car back in the shop, and it was late, about 2 in the morning, and I've been working for a long time, and I was tired. And you know when you're tired, you know how the enemy really gets on you, and he starts talking to you. Every time I looked out my bathroom window, I wouldn't even look at that car, because I don't know if you've ever seen a car been burnt, but it's not, even if you're a positive guy, when a car's been burnt and just, <laughs> I mean, it's already total, now it's just, Brown, rusty, the into everything. It's everything I done spent money on it. I'm not. I don't have money to replace that. So I had it pulled back in the shop. And that night, it was about two in the morning. I walked out of that car, and the enemy starts talking to me, and he starts saying, ten thousand dollars. What are you gonna do? That's what I'd spend on that car, and I'd burn it. Spend all the money. But you know, the Holy Spirit spoke up in my heart. So gentle, so great. Here's what he said. He said, son, he said, you can let this problem be big and I'll be small. But he said, if you'll let me be big, this problem will be small. And I had a little dance. See, because God is able to make a way in your life. No matter what you're facing today. God is able to make a way. And he's empowered you and I with a special power. It's called praying in tongues. It's a spiritual power. It's a spiritual warfare. It's something that won't just build you up physically, but of course spiritually. It builds you up inside out. This builds you up. How many can stand to be built up some today? How many go through some trials sometimes? How many go through some stuff that may be bigger than you? Then I think what you need to do is, is pray in tongues. All of us need to do that. You need to stir up. You know, Paul taught him to stir up the gift that's in you, Timothy. You're fighting some stuff that is beyond you. You need to stir it up. And sometimes what we do is we just, some of y'all, how many spirit-filled believers I got in here right now that pray in tongues? Raise your hand if you're, but you know, a lot of y'all are already, Holy Ghost has got spirit-filled. But you know, a lot of times we just kind of get dormant on that. We just let that gift kind of lay dormant. And God doesn't want let that gift lay dormant. He said, I've empowered you for a purpose. Spend some time building up yourself. And you know, you can do it. You can go down the road or wherever you just make time for him, just talk in tongues. I'm walking through Walmart. I don't talk out loud. I'm, getting, I'm under my breath. You know, pray in the Spirit. Spend time praying in the Spirit. Build yourself up. I'm all about that. I, I want my body to be repaired. I want my life to be on focus. I want everything that God has intended for me to walk in while we're on this earth. I want all that. How many want all God has for you? Don't want to go to the grave with 85% with of the life force and the presence of the reality of who Jesus is and what God has got planned for your life. I don't want to go to the grave with 85% of that undone. I want to walk in him and have everything he has for me. Amen. 
Well, I want to do this because I, I asked God about this. He said, just have them stand to their feet and we're going to pray where you're at in your seat. You know what? I know this. Jesus, the baptizer of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to tell you two quick things. Then I'm going to make you stand up. We're all going to pray in tongues. If you never prayed in tongues, this is your day. You know, the first time I went to pray in tongues, I was at Assembly of God in Malvern. Here's what happened. It was bigger than this. There's 500 people there. And I walked down there. I'm barely saved. And I walked down there, but I was by myself. And I was in front of that crowd. And I got intimidated. Because I'm, I'm just by myself, so I'm kind of standing out. How many know what I'm talking about? See, the devil be, you're the only one down here. They are waiting on you. They want to go eat. <laughs> I'm fixing to shut up. We're going, <laughs> but we're going to pray. But so, you know, I, I didn't receive the Holy Ghost that day just because I was intimidated. I, you know, but a couple of weeks, a couple of weeks later on Sunday night service, there's a bunch of people down front, and I was so hungry. I said, God, and, you know, back then I wanted the Holy Ghost, and I wanted to, and, and I wanted to be, I wanted everybody to know how spiritual I was. How many remember those days? I'm spiritual. Hallelujah. So when I pray in tongues, I want you to know my language is super good because I'm super spiritual. I'm barely saved. I, know, I barely knew Jesus. So what, I remember down there, I, was, I was ready for that real beautiful language to come out. And let me tell you something. Your tongue, don't, what matters about your tongue is the most unruly member of your body. And God wants to know, are you willing to yield the most unruly member of your body to me that I can pray through you, not from your head, but from your heart? Yes. That's how the Holy Spirit works. So I, you know, I, shot, I, I just prayed. Oh, and of course, when I went down there that day, I, I remember it just kept coming up, see, bubbling. See, Jesus said, out of your belly will flow a river of living water. It just starts coming up. And, and, and all I, got, I kept thinking, I didn't want to say these words. They sound so stupid. <laughs> but finally, I said, it don't matter. You know, when you get so hungry for God to do something in your life, you get to where I don't care what the other people think about me. I ain't here to impress nobody. I don't care about that. I got to have this Jesus. I got to have more of him. I got down there. It didn't matter. It just came out. Die, 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 die. But I tell you what happened. When I did die, 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 I just yield myself to him. I turned around and I wanted to hug everybody. Because Romans 5, 5 says, the very love of God is shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost. I got a bucket load of God in my soul. Because I just yielded myself to him. And God wants to do that to you today. He wants to flow in your life like you've never encountered. And don't you wait till tomorrow because God only works in the present time. Yes, he'll work tomorrow, yes. But today's the day. This is the day. This is the time. This is the hour. This is your opportunity to move on with Jesus. To be closer to him. After all, what is it about being closer to God you don't want? I want to be closer to him. I want to know him every day. They say, why are you so early down there? Because David Hall came the other day. I said, you could give me a million dollar check at 8 o'clock in the morning, and I'll still take it. But anyway, <laughs> it wouldn't be as great as what I have with him. Yeah. Nothing in this world, nothing compares to being with him he loves you so much he's got good things for you say good things close with this right here first corinthians 14 14 says this when i pray in the spirit put that up there it says when i pray in unknown tongue my spirit prayeth but my mind my understanding is what unfruitful quit trying to understand it quit trying to figure it out you ain't doing that it don't come from here, it's from your heart. It's from here, out of your belly. Belly flows, river. So what happens is, where's the devil fight you? Right there. How many got saved? And one long after that, you got saved. Devil, you ain't saved. Let me see your hand. Anybody got saved? You ain't saved. The devil's a liar. Say the devil's a liar. He's going to try to talk you out of every gift. I'm still waiting on God. You know, I, I believe by stripes I'm healed in my eyes. In every part of my body. And some of it, I'm still waiting for the manifestation. But I ain't giving up on it. I keep speaking the truth in love. I keep believing God. And let God watch over his word and perform it. 
Well, you sound like crazy, man. I, I'm crazy for Jesus. I believe that God will watch over his word to perform it for you. So here's what we want to do. I want to have you stand up right now where you are. Everybody in this whole building, stand up. If y'all want to come up here and sing, set a fire on my heart, sing that song. I was going to have to play something else up there. That's okay, but y'all go, whatever y'all want to do, get some, that's good. I like that song. That's a good, set a fire on my heart. Here's what we're going to do. Jesus, the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and I see, I get to see, I'll, tomorrow night I'll probably, I, I get to see I go to prisons and we got a bunch of guys. Every time, you know, the Holy Ghost, Jesus baptizes people that want to be baptized. All you got to do is want it and yield yourself. You got to shut this up. Here's the biggest battle you'll have. Is this really the Holy Ghost or not? Shut your little head up. He said, your understanding is unfruitful. We just read that. Believe God. Say, believe God. Out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. We're going to say a simple prayer. The only qualification for you to receive the Holy Ghost today is this. You must be born again. The Spirit of God must already be in you. You must be born again. Say, are all y'all born again? Does anybody here need Jesus? If you're all born again, you're a candidate, pray from your spirit, man. What are you going to do? You're going to get yourself in the will of God in a much greater way than you are right now. What kind of plan are you going to have if your life is better than God's plan? There ain't one. Young people, and if I could go back before I was 20, I'd pray in tongues every day of my life. Spend time praying in the spirit. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to ask God to fill us. I want to say a little prayer out loud. I want y'all to pray after me. Then I want you to do this. I want you to shut your head up and let whatever comes out, come out. I don't care what sounds stupid. Don't talk English. You can't talk English and tongues at the same time. I can't talk Spanish and English at the same time. One or the other. Are y'all with me? Say it with me. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for Jesus, the author and developer of my faith. Thank you for everlasting life. Thank you for your presence today. I want you to fill me today to overflowing. And I receive by faith the infilling of the Holy Ghost with evidence of praying in the Spirit. I release myself right now.
subject to the prophet. You don't have to worry about the spirit doing something stupid or foolish. She doesn't do that. You know, you can pray in the spirit when you want to. But you can't pray in two languages at one time. She's going one or the other. But I, I reckon just pray, spend some time. How many of y'all prayed in the tongues for the first time? Raise your hand if you prayed in tongues for the first time today. Raise your hand. There's one. There's, there's two. There's three. Come on. Four. Listen, God, God orchestrates things. God does things. The rest of y'all, if some of y'all haven't been filled, you need to be, you need to go home like I told my granddaughter. You don't have to do it in front of me. The main things you start doing it, just, uh, just, just let the Holy Spirit take control. You know, just yield your tongue to Him. You're, you're praying mysteries. God wants to empower your life more than it is right now. I appreciate y'all being patient. I know I may have gone over time. In God, a good God. I, I love y'all with the love of the Lord. Thank y'all for having me come out. God bless you, Brother Mike. Mm. Do I have to speak in tongues, Brother Mike? No, you don't. You don't have to. You get to. And the thing I love about what he said was, because I had heard the old timers say all the time, just pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Why? Why? The simple fact that I didn't get that wasn't being communicated to me was this. God wants to move, but he can only move through you. He wants to declare, but he can only declare through you. He wants to do things in your life, but he handcuffs himself to you. When I pray in the Spirit, suddenly God is free to do what it is he's been wanting to do but he can't do if I'm not willing to be yielded. He says, son, I don't need you to kill Goliath. I need you to throw the rock. I'll kill Goliath if you'll just throw the rock. I don't need you to pray things into existence. I just need you to be open to pray. Let me pray through you. Because how you know, we can pray wrong. We can pray what we want versus what the Father wants. But when I yield... It happens. Now listen. We had about four people or so baptized in the Holy Spirit. Listen, if that was you, don't stop. Satan's been willing to talk bad about you. Start talking bad about him to the Father through that gift. The same time took me three years of seeking the Holy Spirit before God gave it. Why so long? I don't know, but it happened. It finally happened. And I will encourage you with this thought. It doesn't have to happen in here. It can happen out there. What I do ask is you remember this, that the prayer language is unfruitful to this mind. So cut this off. Just let it come from here out. You can't, what he said, you can't speak two languages at one time. So let that which is here just come out. Take a step of faith. Look, I'm not telling you how to, how to do it. I'm not telling you to repeat after me, untie my bow tie. I'm not telling you to do that. I'm asking you to just take that step of faith and just see what God will do. See what God will do. Let God, because I'm telling you, it's not a pen that you wear and say, I've spoken tongues. It's so God can use you to move mountains. So, Father, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit, the freedom that the Holy Spirit brings. I thank you, Lord God. It doesn't have to be, it may be a mystery, but it does not have to be mysterious. That, Father, God is a thing we can walk in and operate in because of the gifts of the Spirit. Lord, they don't make sense. They don't work in politics. They don't work in, in the economy. They don't work in education, but they work. We don't understand how, but they work. So, Father, I pray right now, let the Spirit be upon us. Let the gifts of the Spirit be in us. Let the power of the Spirit be moving through us, impacting the world around us. Because my worshipers, you said, will worship me in two ways, Spirit and truth. So, God, help us to be a people committed to both. And, Lord, I'm believing right now that, Father, in this week, I'm believing for more people to be free to experience this way of praying so that, Father, greater things can occur in their life than have ever happened. Now, Father, I pray that no one get discouraged, but to keep in their car, 
uh, uh, in the shower, no matter where they find themselves, just keep seeking you. Keep waiting on you. Keep being in your presence because when we are in the presence of God, something will happen. so that, Lord, we can be the people you need us to be. Father, we just give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. In Jesus' name. Somebody love the Lord said amen. I love you, but God loves you a whole lot more. And I pray that you come back here tonight, 5 o'clock, and see what else it is that God wants to do. God bless you. We love you. Shake a hand, hug a neck, cause you're friendly. Come by and see Brother Ron. Tell him you appreciate the word. Those of you that were baptized in the Holy Spirit, come let me know. I want to celebrate with you. God bless you. We love you. We'll see you tonight at 5 o'clock. Yes.